welcome to your daily dose of inspirational and life-changing Bible studies designed to equip you to conquer your world. We encourage you to share this devotion with your family and friends, even start a watch party. We know that you will be blessed and edified. Today's daily devotion starts now. All right. So let's pray, and then we're going to get into the Word of God this morning. We have about 20 minutes, and we want to make sure that we get in some value this morning. Father, I thank you for your goodness, your mercies. This is the day that you have made. We are in the land of living by choice, not default, but by design. You have given us one more day to be in the land of the living for purpose, Lord. We know that when we are not dead yet, it means you are not done yet with working in our life. And I thank you, O oh God, today that, O oh God, you will continue to give us uh, provision and protection. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. Father God, we give ourselves to you. We thank you, O oh God, for salvation. We pray, O oh God, that you will strengthen us in our walk with you. Strengthen us, O oh God, in, in our relationship with you, in our life of prayer, in our life of living the work. Father, surround us with your love, your love that never fails. Nothing can separate us from it. And we thank you, O oh God, for your goodness and your mercies. This morning, we partake into your word. May it fill us, O oh God, Father, for our me too is to do the will of him that sent us. I thank you, O oh God, and may you, may you be with us and may your presence, O oh God, be so central in what we do this morning. May more and more lives be touched by the power of your love. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, say hi to somebody in the chat this morning. Tag somebody and give them a little word of encouragement. So we want to get into the word of God. I'm going to give you some rules of engagement. I want you to write this down in your notes. Rules of engagement. I'm going to show you from the scripture, but I'll give you stories. I've learned for many years being around the elders and my parents. For many years how they fight. I've seen victory after victory after victory, how they fight. John chapter 14, verse 30. Let me see if I can pull it up here. John chapter 14, verse 30. Are you there? Look at it. First rule of engagement. Are you ready? Jesus is saying, I will not say much more to you the prince of this world is coming and he has no hold over me. Hold on. Let, let me get another version here. I will no longer talk much with you for the ruler of this world is coming and he has nothing in me. See that right there? He has nothing in me. You see, Luke, why is that the first rule of engagement? Watch this. You do not want to go fighting against an enemy and the enemy has something on you or in you. If you want to stand with authority and resist the enemy, you can't be violating God's law. Sin is agreement with the devil. Sin is agreement with the enemy. Because you see sin, I, S-I-N, is in the middle of sin. And sin means we have missed the mark. But that mark is a mark in Christ. But when you miss the mark in Christ, you hit a target somewhere else. I'm going to say that again. When you miss the mark in Christ, you hit a target somewhere else. So sin actually pleases someone else. It may displease God, but it also pleases someone else. 
So we can't be fighting against a devil and pleasing him at the same time. You can't be trying to clean the wall and your hands are dirty. You can't be praying and rebuking him and he has planted a seed in you. You can't be using scripture to declare against him, but you agree with his words. The devil is going to laugh. He said, well, Luke, what do you mean? I want to show you something. You know, spiritual warfare is not something to be played with. It's, it really is no joke. So what am I trying to say? Your first line of defense is having a clean, clean hands and a pure heart. Clean hands and a pure heart. The devil must have nothing in you. Watch this. In the book of Acts, chapter 19, verse 15 to 17. Look, look, look at look at the look at the, the thinking behind the spirit. Listen to this. An evil spirit answered and said. All right, hold on. Let me let me go back. Let me go back. Let me go back a little bit so we can get pretext to understand context. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits, the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, we adjure you by Jesus, whom Paul preacheth. And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, and chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus and fear fell upon them all. And the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. Now, what happened there? Here's this. We adjure you by Jesus, whom Paul preacheth. And the demon, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? You know what that means? You cannot do spiritual warfare on somebody else's authority or somebody else's position spiritually you can't you can't do warfare in somebody else's purity you can't do warfare in somebody else's righteousness before god you cannot do warfare in somebody else's spiritual disciplines you cannot do warfare in somebody else's prayer life you cannot do warfare in somebody else's knowledge of the word you have to come clean with God, you have to be uh, present yourself before the Lord. And when you stand and you want to engage, because look, whether you like it or not, if you are pursuing purpose, you will run into resistance of the enemy. But even if you want to just be safe and hide in a corner, the enemy will bring a fight to you. Is that you take it then? Or he'll bring a fight to you. Job was minding his business. And the devil brought a fight to him. But thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Right? Job prevailed. But I want to say this to you. If you want to have authority. Your first line of defense. Is that the enemy must have nothing in you. You know, I cannot fight on my father's. My mother and my father's faith. I must have your own faith will make you whole. So it means each and every one of us have a responsibility. 
to live right. Purify my words, my thoughts, my heart, no unforgiveness. Don't let him have anything in you. Huh? Pastor Dougie talk about men beating their wives at home and then coming to worship God. You're making joke. <laughs> That's a joke. Can't do that. Curse out your children and then you come innocently and worshiping in the house? No, 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 no. The first rule of engagement, if you want to have victory in spiritual warfare, is when the enemy comes, he must find nothing in you. The devil knows him when it comes to fight. All right, we know Paul. He bombards us. We know his boldness. We know his courage. We know his prayer life. Jesus, we know him. When he walked through, we feared him. When people call upon his name, we feared him. We know Jesus. We know Paul. We don't know you. Who is you coming this morning to tell us about Jesus who Paul preached? You don't even know the Jesus. And you barely know Paul. You can't stand on Jesus' and Paul's face to come and rebuke us. Get out of here. Whose faith are you standing on this morning? Let me tell you this. you got to work on your own faith this morning. You got Now, that is why my second principle, I don't have time, is that another rule, the second rule of engagement is that when you fight, you do not fight alone. You still it fighting together is no excuse for you to say, well, all right, I'm going to agree with an intercessor, so I don't have to live right. This intercessor could be living right and praying for me. I don't have to live right. One of the first things I do when I pray for people who are sick and they want a miracle is that we ask God to forgive us of all our sins. We're not asking for miracles on top of disobedience. Lord, forgive me of everything, all my all unrighteousness. Forgive me, word, motive, deed. Forgive us, Lord. I ask you to wash us with your precious blood. You have to. Now, the Bible says one shall put what? A thousand to flight. So I'm not saying that you cannot fight on your own, but the Bible really encourages us to, for the power of what? Agreement. One can put a thousand to flight, Deuteronomy 32 and 30, but two will put what? 10,000. Two will put what? 10,000. One will put a thousand, but two will put what? 10,000, you have to have a squad. You have to have a crew in the spirit. You have to have your gang in the spirit. Somebody say gang. Yes, the gang is around a good godly purpose. When you are in trouble, you no need to know how to make a call and call up your squad. Say, listen, some of you have been fighting alone. You're fighting alone. You cannot do life alone. If any two shall agree, one shall put a thousand, but two shall put what? Ten thousand. Paul and Silas, Elijah and Elisha, Jesus and his disciples, Naomi and Ruth, agree with somebody. Who's your two? Who's in your squad? Who's your three? When something, I can call them up right now and we go to work in the spirit. Who's there? Who's in your clique? In the spirit realm, you have to have people who know how to fight. Psalm 144, teach my hands how to war and my fingers how to fight. You need some folk in your life whose hands know how to war and fingers know how to fight.
Come on, tag one. Tag somebody in your squad right now in the chat. Tag somebody in your squad right now in your chat. Tag somebody who is in your clique right now in the chat. Let me see if you have somebody. Tag one, tag two. Let me see right now if you have somebody you go to war with. Tag them right now in the chat. I want to know. I want to know. I want to know. Tag somebody. Tag somebody. Who do you go to war with? Who do you fight with? Let me see you. Who do you fight with? One, my heart is clean, my hands are clean. Let the devil find nothing in you. Two, I do not fight alone. I fight on the, on, the, on the premise of agreement. One shall put a thousand, but two shall put and a threefold cord. I've seen some real warriors getting tagged there. These people, these people have some battle scars. Some of these people being tagged here, afraid them in the spirit. Wow. They're bad. You know, back in the day in primary school, you know, people who had a reputation. A bad boy. You see that gilded? Don't touch she, she, she bad like Jeff. She bad. You have some people here. Somebody say, I have no one. You see what I'm saying? There are people who are fighting alone. We don't want anybody fighting alone. You can't do life alone. This is what the enemy loves. When you don't know the rules of engagement, the enemy wants you to be doing life and you are violating all the principles of solid spiritual warfare and engagement. One, I must have nothing in me. Two, power of agreement. Power of agreement. Power of agreement. Just those two things I want you to hold on to. One, you have the position of victory. He has given us the victory. So you're not getting up this morning to try and be victorious. You will, you got up in victory. Get up this morning and claim it. You got up in the position of victory. He's given you the victory. Now, when you are en engaging in warfare, your first our responsibility now. So the philosophy is we already have the victory. But now our responsibility is one, the enemy must not find anything in us. You don't want to be fighting against him and he has stuff in you. You had a fight with clean hands and a pure heart. That's how we have to live. Secondly, I'll continue this. Secondly, we don't fight alone. We fight on the premise of what? Agreement. One can put a thousand, but two can put what? 10,000 to fly. I'll go further on where I show you how when you're fighting against people who are fighting against you. Now, it's one thing for you to be facing just general resistance. But what about when you face people who just like us, who are working towards righteousness, they're people who are hired to work towards evil. They don't know how to fight. There are rules of engagement. They don't know how to cause confusion. They don't know how to dismantle. They don't know how to root up. They don't know how to pull down. They don't know how to overthrow. They have to know how to destroy. They have to get strategy power strategy I'm going to show you how to know what they are planning that is one of your rules of engagement dismantling through strategy the plans of the enemy God will give you insight to know their plans book of Nehemiah you have to know God will give you a download that look I prayed in somebody's situation that there are people on the job was working against her. I prayed that somebody's going to slip up and send an email that they were not supposed to send or conversation of, of things against that person is going to leak. I prayed that. And what is going to happen? So while the enemy is planning, a plan will leak. Boom. While they're convers 
You're having conversation, something's going to leak. Boom. Somebody's going to send some information by mistake. Boom. I declared it in the plans of the enemy. Watch it will happen. I will give you the testimony. So let me pray for you this morning. We'll continue. Father, I thank you this morning for your goodness, your mercies. Thank you for a position of victory in our life. May you empower your people today as they go out this week to claim it, to walk in it, to have an attitude of a victor this week. Lord, you fought for us. You won the battle. You died. You sent your son to die on the cross. He rose again. He came out triumphantly and left us in a position of victory. Why? We died with him and we rose again with him. Now we have been given, oh God, Father, the position of victory in this life and we accept nothing less. We are the head and not the tail, above and not beneath the first and not the last. We are God's choice. We are the number one. We are the best. We are on the right team. We are in the right kingdom. So we expect, to oh God, Father, doors to open on its own accord. I pray for super provision in the lives of the people. Increase on every side. May they believe, give them the courage, the step of the faith to ask for the promotion, to ask for, the, for, for more. Ask, ask, and you will receive. I pray that over somebody's life. Stop being bashful or shy. Ask. The, the least you can do is ask. You have not because you ask not. You ask and you shall receive. May God give you the faith to ask for exactly what you desire in your heart. Submit our lives to you. Jesus name. Amen. God bless you. May you do like Christ and go everywhere you go, do good. Everywhere you go, do good. Have an amazing week. God bless you.